An image that would benefit most products is a multi-use callout. And just like this, the key to doing it effectively is to highlight your contrasting features. So for this water bottle, the contrasting feature is that it can hold both hot and cold liquids for an extended period of time. And now in the case for this vacuum cleaner, the contrasting feature is that it can be used on three different surfaces. Now you tell me, which image does a better job at presenting this? In my opinion, it's the one on the left since it's clearly showing it in action, whereas the right-hand image relies on shoppers reading the subtitle and then hoping they understand or even care about the 20 kPa suction power. When's the last time you searched for a 20 kPa vacuum cleaner? Um... Now what about these two images? Again, the one on the left does a much better job of actually showing the multi-use capability versus the one on the right, which is making shoppers read a wordy infographic. Which brings us to the second type of image that converts well, and that's a scannable infographic. You only have a few seconds to capture someone's attention, so if you're going to make shoppers read, then like this, use graphics and short text to make it easier for them to find exactly what they're looking for. Nobody wants to read a big block of text, so don't give your shoppers homework they never asked for. Instead, through your own intuition and with keyword research, prioritize the most important benefits and summarize them in an easily digestible manner. When in doubt, ask yourself these two questions. Do people really care about these features? And if so, how quickly will they understand them? Shoppers want quick and relevant information, so don't make them struggle finding it. Because if they do, they'll click out and go to one of your competitors. And you've already spent too much time and money creating your business, so make sure you're putting that same effort into your images. This is exactly why we made this video, to inspire you with 20 different types of images that will attract more shoppers and convert more sales. Because at the end of the day, improving your click-through rate and conversion rate will have the greatest overall impact on your Amazon business. Now, whereas the last two images were relevant for your conversion rate, image number three is all about increasing your click-through rate with the use of main image props. But just a word of caution, this is one of those highly debated gray areas that's technically against Amazon's terms of service, so it's really important that you understand the risk and potential consequences. For example, this image directly violates Amazon's 85% rule, which says your product must fill at least 85% of the canvas. Another example of what not to do is this main image that uses a non-white background, text, and again, a bearded man that takes up more of the image than the actual product. Now, unless these two are selling bearded men, I wouldn't be surprised if the sellers got their accounts suspended, or at the very least, their listings became suppressed in the search results. These are the risks you take by going against Amazon's rules, but let me show you now how to mitigate your risk and still gain a competitive advantage. First, start by looking up your main keyword and check to see if any products are using props. Like this, you'll find that some categories are just filled with main images using models to help communicate the product's use case. And if you're wondering why Amazon is allowing this, I can really only give you my opinion here, and that's that these props are only subtly helping communicate the product's intended use. What it all seems to come down to is how it affects the customer experience. So if you're considering testing out a prop, just make sure that it truly benefits the shopper by seeing it used in that way. Amazon's always been very selective about what they enforce, but more than anything, they care about making their customers happy. Huh. So just keep that in mind along with the potential risks and consequences of going against Amazon's terms of service. But coming back to this example, I think these two images are far too risky to even test, but also I do think they're on the right track. Using a perfectly groomed bearded man is a a great way to show the product's intended use, but what I do here instead is something like what this product did. Which brings us to image tip number four, show the packaging. If you're worried about violating the terms of service, showing your product's packaging is a much safer and Amazon approved alternative. This is a great way to communicate key points such as the intended use case, or if it's aesthetically pleasing, it could also help you stand out in the search results. But if your packaging doesn't have nice aesthetics, don't just include it to include it. This one's especially bad because it's just a plain white box, and also there's hardly any contrast with it against the plain white background. So instead, if your product doesn't come in nice packaging, you can still be creative and include some sort of design element that helps it stand out. Here are some good examples of products that are using labels to emphasize important details. And while these labels aren't on the actual packaging, as long as it's not too different or misleading shoppers in any way, then it's perfectly fine to slightly edit your existing packaging to help drive home a key feature. And just a quick pro tip, when designing your actual product packaging, consider these elements that will help you get more clicks in the search results. Also, if you're getting any value from this video so far, please let us know by hitting the like button down below. The fifth image tip is to show everything. If your product comes with multiple pieces that people care about, make sure to showcase them all in your main image. 
Like we talked about, you wanna make it as easy as possible for shoppers to quickly understand both your product and its full value. And shoppers perceive greater value when they can see all the included items right away. So make it easier for them to make this leap and not only will it help you win more clicks, but by delivering this information right away, shoppers won't have to dig through the rest of your images to find what they're ultimately looking for. Including everything of importance is a really great way to improve your product's click-through rate. And if your product has multiple variations, another good tip is to show those other variations in the main image. In this case, if a shopper is searching for a broad term like water bottle, but is really just looking for a green one, then this image will still grab their attention even though the purple one is displayed. Compare that with this main image that does look nice, however, it doesn't hint at the fact that they offer eight other color options. But of course, if you have 10 plus variations, it might not make sense to include all of them. But what you could do now is prioritize just the top eight or 10, and then only display those in the main image. What I really love about this, especially for color variations, is that you're able to use these colors to draw even more attention to your product. And this brings us nicely to tip number seven, add color. Now this can be done on all of your images, but especially with your main image, one way to stand out in the search results is to add life into what would otherwise be clear or transparent. Out of these products here, I'm pretty confident that nine out of 10 of you would click on this one. And of course you'll need to have a product that this makes sense for, but I'm sure there's plenty of other niches out there where the same strategy can be applied, whether you're using glass, plastic, or any transparent material designed to hold things. Tip number eight, optimize for mobile. Because mobile users often glance quickly through product listings, it's important to make sure that your key features are clearly highlighted without distracting clutter. Try to avoid overcrowding your image with excessive text or graphics that make it difficult to see the main callouts you're drawing attention to. And when you do use text, look at it on your own phone and just double check that the size and font is easily scannable. Now, another great way to optimize for mobile shoppers is to zoom into your product details. Since shoppers can't actually touch or view your product in person, it's important to show them every possible angle of your product. This will make the customer more interested in purchasing because they can see all of the benefits. For example, the primary callout for this image is that the swing is strong and very durable. So what this brand has chosen to do is zoom into those specific details, showing customers the durable hardware, materials, and features that back up this claim. But not only does this help sell customers on the quality and design of the product, it's also helping distinguish it from competitors that aren't properly displaying all of their details. You wanna capitalize off of your competitor's flaws. And a really great way of doing this more directly is by using a us versus them comparison image. When you contrast your product features with others, it helps shoppers understand why yours is the better choice and that they no longer need to look anywhere else for what they need. This simplifies their decision-making process and makes it even more likely that they'll make a quick and immediate purchase from you. But the key to doing this right is to clearly show the critical reasons why they should buy your product instead of your competition. If your product has a unique selling point that others don't, make sure to emphasize those, along with the specific features, benefits, or improvements that help you stand out. And even if there's no true difference between your product and the competition, this type of image is often just used as a clever way to address your product's sticking points. Which brings us to tip number 11. This is when you get out in front of those potential concerns that customers have about purchasing your type of product. Every product has its downsides. And as a shopper yourself, you know how important it is to look at the reviews before buying. What if it's a cheap product? What if it doesn't work properly? Or what if it just doesn't hold up after a few uses? These are the types of questions that shoppers are hoping to confirm before spending their hard earned money. So that's why it's really important to show the customer they have nothing to worry about by directly addressing these sticking points in your images. And before you go spending a lot of time and money on creating new images, I think this should be the very first thing you do because you wanna use these insights to influence your overall image plan. So. How do you find your product's main sticking points? Well, there's a few different ways you can approach this, but my favorite way is by doing review analysis. Hidden in the review section, every listing has a gold mine of insights that will help you better understand what's holding back potential customers. All you need to do is extract this information and identify the key trends. Inside your Seller Central account, Amazon recently added a cool new beta feature called Customer Review Insights. Here you can see any product or categories top positive and negative reviews, and below that is a graph that helps you visualize the impact each one has on the star rating. To access it, just head over to the Product Opportunity Explorer within your Growth tab. Then in the search bar, you can either search for a specific ASIN, or in this case, what I like to do is type in my category's main keyword. 
Doing it this way allows you to aggregate all the written reviews in your niche to identify just the top trends. So in this niche here, we can see that the top negative reviews mention the product quality. There's at least four different mentions of these products not doing a good job of either resisting water or preventing leakage. Adding them together accounts for almost a quarter of all the negative reviews in this category. So now armed with this insight, just like we did for our product, you can create a highly targeted image that addresses this popular sticking point. We also thought it'd be a really good idea to include this in our product video, which we made sure to put at the beginning as our very first call out. This also doubles as a sponsored brand video campaign, which we found works really well knowing that customers are specifically looking for better waterproofing pee pads. The key here is to emphasize the good points and address the bad points. But also, as you can see here, one of these potential sticking points could be that your product looks much different on screen than it does in person. So if the size of your product matters, it's really important to include a size reference image. Rather than just listing your product's dimensions, try helping shoppers visualize how it will fit into their everyday lives. By comparing your product alongside a common reference object, such as a person or a familiar item, it makes it easier to understand the actual size and scale. Trust me, this will go a long way in helping you reduce the rate of returns, exchanges, and negative reviews related to incorrect assumptions. Providing a size reference like this will contribute to a more positive customer experience and less of those profit killing return fees. This along with some of the earlier tips is a great example of show don't tell. Whenever you can, it's always best to show the thing you're trying to say. For example, if your product's waterproof, give it a shake and show how it doesn't leak. If your product is extra long, show it being used in a setting where the extra length comes in handy. This is what we did for one of our products, but it's just one of a million different ways that you can implement this idea of show don't tell. Bringing back an example from earlier, you can even combine this with the us first them image. There's so many different ways that you can do this, so I encourage you to just look at your listing and ask how you can visualize your product's main benefits. And this brings us to the next point. Unless your product is very technical, it's always better to highlight the customer benefits over the product features. For example, nobody's buying this product because it contains cholesterol or any other ingredient on the right-hand side. They're buying it for all the benefits listed on the left to support their dog's immune system, seasonal allergies, and for gut health. Because they have emotional appeal, customer benefits resonate much better than product features that tend to be more rational and technical in nature. Problems are relatable and everybody has them. So by illustrating how your product solves their pain points and enhances their lives, you're more likely to grab attention, create a connection, and build immediate trust. Benefit-oriented visuals quickly convey the positive impact or transformation that customers can expect by using your product. And speaking of, a great way to do this is by using a before and after image. Does your product solve a specific problem for customers? If so, this is a highly effective way to show exactly how it will benefit them. This dramatic side-by-side -side serves as concrete proof that this back brace will help with poor posture, and it lets potential customers see the tangible difference that this product could make in their lives. Think of it as a visual testimony. Similar to reading reviews, seeing actual evidence of the outcomes achieved by others will help alleviate skepticism and increase the confidence in the value of your product. Talking about a product's benefits is one thing, but showing it in action is much more powerful. And to make this even more relatable, take it one step further by showing your actual customers. Anytime you have models in your images, choose one that reflects your target audience just like this brand is doing here. Because when your target audience sees people who resemble them, it helps them instantly visualize using your product. Shoppers are much more likely to engage with images that reflect their own demographics, lifestyles, or aspirations. One way that you can find out who your customers are is by going to your Seller Central account and in the Brands tab, select Brand Analytics. From here, you can navigate to demographics and see things like your customer's age, yearly income, education, gender, and marital status. However, because I don't know how accurate all this information is or where they get it from, I usually just use this to identify the primary gender and age of my typical customer. For example, I can see that most of our customers are female, and then looking over at the ages here, everything's pretty much even with a slight edge going to those over the age of 65. So what I would do with this information, whenever I go to create new images, I'd most likely ask for a middle-aged female model. However, unless your product is only for a specific audience, it's important to still strike a balance and consider the broader diversity within your target audience. So know who your primary customer is, but still aim to represent a range of demographics, including age, gender, ethnicity, body types, abilities, and so on. Now, another way you can assist a purchasing decision is to include instructional images. If your product requires some sort of assembly, installation, or even just a little bit of education, then demonstrate that process in one of your images. This little touch can help make shoppers become more confident in making a purchase decision 
especially if they thought it'd be much harder than it actually is. Instructional pictures like these are great secondary images to have or within your product descriptions A plus content. Now, another good image to have is a 3D rendering. If your product has an important benefit that isn't easily seen from the exterior, you can include a 3D cross-section design to give that feature the attention it deserves. For example, this insulated tumbler here is showing, not just telling the customer, how it keeps the drinks hot and cold. Now the customer can better understand how the tumbler works while learning about all the materials from one simple photo. While this isn't necessary for every item, it can help customers understand a product's complexities or or mechanisms. However, of course, this is probably something you want to leave to a professional photographer. But on that note, hopefully this video is giving you inspiration to send to your professional photographers. While you can certainly try taking all these images yourself, if you have the budget, I'd highly recommend making the investment needed to produce at the highest quality. And if this video has helped you so far, let us know by dropping a comment below with what new image idea you want to try next. But speaking of professional photography, if you're going down that route, you might also want to ask them to capture a few custom images that you can use in your advertising campaigns. Specifically for sponsored brands and display campaigns, you're able to use custom images as your main creative. And these images usually convert at a much higher rate than standard text or just your brand's logo. The difference between these and your product images are that you'll most likely use lifestyle photos and ideally, you're also considering the keywords you'll be bidding on. For example, if we know we're bidding on the term marshmallow roasting sticks, then I'd want to use a photo similar to this one. Now in a separate campaign, if we were to bid on the term shrimp roasting sticks, then I'd want to use this image instead. It's all about creating an eye-catching visual that grabs attention and is relevant to the shopper's search query. But before you go handing off these ideas to your photographer, I want to first show you how we were able to save potentially thousands of dollars by creating those last two images you just saw ourselves with the use of of artificial intelligence. Recently, we transformed all of our product images using just a few AI tools such as Midjourney, Adobe Firefly, and Photoshop, Leonardo, and Canva. And not only were we able to improve our existing images, but we also created a few of them from complete scratch. That's right, this entire image was 100% generated with AI. Had we gone out and paid a professional photographer, this one image alone would have cost us a few hundred dollars. Now, honestly, it did take some time to learn these tools, but as someone with zero design or Photoshop experience, it only took me a few videos to understand my way around. So if you also wanna learn how, check out this next video that will show you our full step-by-step -step process, and that includes all the prompts we use to generate our product images with AI. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you over in the next video.